because so many Americans today, so much of middle America and low income America really don't have that equal opportunity. And the reason we are Democrats, the reason we are here, and the reason we should be so worked up about getting people involved is that we really are the only political party that historically, traditionally fights for the opportunity of people that don't have to at least have a chance at the American dream. We do represent that part of America that is so often left out. And that has to be our religion. That has to be the reason we're Democrats. If we're doing well, wealthy people in America, and now I got to be one of them, I got to tell you, don't worry about us. We're doing fine. <laughs> And the, and the Republican Party, God bless it, does very well at representing the interests of wealthy people. But I got to tell you, most people aren't wealthy. I have lived in this country at every income level that exists, from nothing to, as I said, the ridiculously privileged life I live today. And I got to tell you, it wasn't until I became wealthy that I suddenly saw, oh my God, everything is done for us. All the laws, all the policies are done to protect the interests of wealthier people. And middle America and low income America is not even part of the equation. They're not even part of the consideration. The last to be thought of, if this elitism, which we have out of Washington, it is serious elitism, and I got to tell you, sometimes it involves Democrats too. Democrats get elected and all of a sudden they start acting like Republicans. And what I told the group earlier today, they do. And what I told the group earlier today, stop acting like Republicans. You'll never play golf as good as they can. You can't fake it. We got to remember our roots, who we really are. And we exist as a party to fight for people that need protection, need help, want to become part of that dream. And this elitism that we get out of Washington today, which basically protects wealthier interests, if it were only snobbery, if it were only bad manners, we'd get over it. But it's more than that. It becomes policy. The elitism becomes public policy, and that hurts middle America. And I'll give you examples. The most vivid example is the recent one we had this past year. The economy's in trouble. And virtually everyone says, we have to figure out ways to juice up the economy. So what do we do? So what does the administration do? What they do is they figure out the way to juice up the economy is to first take care of their own people. So the way to juice up the economy is giving people like me a tax break and screw everybody else? What the hell is that about? <laughs> why, why in God's name are you giving me a tax break for? Why, instead of giving wealthy people a tax break, hey, I got an idea, how about holding on to that money and make sure that all Americans have health insurance? Make sure that none of our schools are underfunded. That's what we ought to be doing. If you let wealthy, with this tax cut, where we let wealthier people hold on to more of their money, how do you think that's gonna juice up the economy? You think if a wealthy person gets a check in the mail, all of a sudden they're gonna go out and spend more? <laughs> wealthy people can already afford to buy whatever they want, that's why we call them wealthy. <laughs> the idea is give middle and low income America the breaks. And here's how we do it. Four out of five Americans pay more in their payroll tax than they do in their income tax. Four out of five Americans pay more in their payroll tax than they do in their income tax. 
And yet no one ever talks about relief on the payroll tax. That's the working man's tax. That's the working woman's tax. When you get out of school and get your first job and you're looking at your paycheck you get every week, every two weeks, the first thing you're bitching about is the fact that, oh my God, look how much they took out this week. <laughs> and that is so unfair. I'll tell you why it's unfair. Because as soon as someone earns $84,000 a year, they no longer have to pay the social security tax. You think that's fair? It means it's a tax that we've created where once you become wealthy, you don't have to pay it anymore. Duh. <laughs> Here's what I'm suggesting. I don't think anyone ought to pay the payroll tax on the first ten dollars to $20,000 a year they earn. <laughs> there are two reasons for that. First, Everybody needs that. The first ten to twenty thousand dollars a year you earn, that's the money you use to actually live on. That's the money you use to buy food, to buy medicine, to pay the rent, to make the car payment. That's basic necessities. So everybody needs that money. You'd really be helping America out if the administration would say instead of the income tax cut, we'll give you a relief on the payroll tax. Secondly, that's the way to juice up the economy. Why? Because if you let people hold on to the first ten dollars to $20,000 a year they make, they will spend every penny of it because they have to. So that money does get put back into the economy. That does juice it all up. So there's a way to help out the economy and help out middle and low income America. But the administration doesn't even think of that because no, that's not their constituency. Now, you say, well, wait a second. If we're not going to pay payroll tax on the first ten dollars to $20,000 a year we earn, how are you going to make up the lost revenue? Well, in large part, you do it by eliminating the cap. As I said before, once I earn $84,000 a year, I no longer have to pay the Social Security tax. I could earn millions of dollars in a year, and I don't pay one penny more in the payroll tax than someone who earns $84,000 a year. How fair is that? It means, in a sense, that a multimillionaire, the amount that that person pays in payroll tax is less than 1% of their income. And for everyone else, it's six and a half percent, seven and a half percent. You see, that's backwards. So if you really, what we should be fighting for is the interests of middle and low income America. And that means payroll tax relief and eliminate the cap so that wealthy people have to pay the same percentage as everybody else has to pay. That's what we ought to be doing. <laughs>